Today we're talking about 28 Days Later, a 2002 Danny Boyle zombie movie starring Killian Murphy and Naomi Harris. A group of animal rights activists mistakenly unleash a deadly virus on England, and when a month passes by, four survivors fight their way to safety. It's been a very long time since I last reviewed a classic movie that came out in the 2000s, 90s, or before that. I know I reviewed Kingdom of the Crystal Skull last week, but that was more of a My Thoughts video for a blockbuster, whereas this is me diving into a movie I've never seen before from the 2000s that is somewhat of a cult classic. Plus, I feel like a lot of movies that came out before 2010 have been under-reviewed and overlooked here on YouTube, unless you're talking about the big-budget blockbusters, but if you look up a movie like 28 Days Later or Atonement, Unforgiven, these are the movies that haven't been talked about enough here on YouTube, and they deserve to be talked about more. The first thing I'll say about 28 Days Later is that this is one of the most disturbing zombie movies I have ever seen. The first 30 minutes in particular were some of the hardest minutes of a film I've ever had to get through just because of how eerie and disturbing these moments were. If you're looking for an action-filled zombie flick, you're not going to find it in 28 Days Later. This is one of the most grim and depressing zombie movies ever made, but at the same time, one of the most realistic. If a zombie apocalypse actually happened in real life, this is probably how it would play out. There would be a lot of death and suicide, a lot less laughter and happiness. So that one reason right there makes this zombie flick one of the most unique to date, even though it's very disturbing. If you hate getting scared, if you're terrified of being afraid, you're not going to enjoy the first 30 minutes of 28 Days Later, but after that, the movie becomes more mild and it's not as much about the scary elements in the movie, and it's more so about survival and escapism. I want to point out too that for a movie like this that feels low budget, it at the same time gets the most out of every single thing the movie has to offer. Like for instance, the actors, Killian Murphy and Naomi Harris are the stars. Back in 2002, most people had no idea who he or she was, but in 2022, we all know who these actors are because they are now A-listers and the movie gets so much out of them. I think this is one of the films back in the 2000s to credit for putting these two on the map in Hollywood. So while being a small scale and low budget movie simultaneously, it's a large scale movie. And I want to point out too that 28 Days Later isn't necessarily a zombie movie. Director Danny Boyle doesn't even consider it a zombie movie. For some of you that that may be very disappointing if you're going into this movie expecting a massive glorified zombie flick. You're not going to get that. In the grand scheme of things, there aren't that many zombies in 28 Days Later. I think the points Danny Boyle was trying to convey was not only how important it is to stick together with others in a time like this in order to survive, but also just how desperate people would get in a zombie apocalypse. The lengths people would go to get things they want. There is a great amount of desperation shown in 28 Days Later. People are savages in this movie. There is no humanity. Humanity is lost in 28 Days Later. People act like animals, and oddly enough, the thing that starts the virus in the first place is a monkey. So all of those elements make 28 Days Later a very memorable movie experience, but I also want to hammer home just how much I love the eerie vibe I get from this movie. It's one of the scariest, especially in the first 30 minutes for a zombie movie. Again, if you hate that kind of stuff, you're going to want to look away in the first 30 minutes. It's suspenseful and terrifying, not just with the zombie moments either. And there is this excellent twist towards the end of 28 Days Later that I won't spoil, but I love how there is a twist at the end of this movie. How many zombie movies have twists? Usually these films are cut and dried. There is nothing else to them other than zombie killing elements. This movie has so much more to offer than most zombie movies. But when I watched the movie, I couldn't help but wonder what the heck is with the film's camera quality. I thought for a second it could be my HBO Max subscription. Maybe they had taken the quality down to 480p. That would have been disastrous, but after doing some research, I realized it was on purpose. I understand why Danny Boyle opted to go for crappier quality. For one, it added to the movie's overall eeriness, and 
second, it helped them make the movie faster. If they used traditional 35mm cameras like most movies use, they wouldn't have been able to produce this movie as fast as they did, so it was just a convenience thing. It took me some time to adjust to the quality, but after a while, I became used to it. But I do wish they used traditional movie cameras. If you're watching this on a big screen, it's not going to look good. The quality doesn't hold up in 2022. We only see better quality in terms of camera work in the final five or so minutes, and that's it. Also, as much as I love the film's eerie and suspenseful moments, at times, it was hard for me to stomach the most disturbing moments in 28 Days Later. I'm somebody that can get through a good horror movie, but when it's just too much, it's too much. That's why I prefer other zombie movies like Train to Busan and Shaun of the Dead. They just live up to my zombie movie preference more than this one. But for the most part, 28 Days Later is one of the most well-made zombie movies of all time. If you're looking for a character-driven, disturbing, suspenseful, realistic zombie movie, this is the one for you. I am giving 28 Days Later an 85%. All right, for those of you who have also seen 28 Days Later, let me know down below in the comment section what your thoughts are of it. This is Batman's week, which means I am going to be re-watching all of Batman's movies, and for the first time, check out Michael Keaton's Batman, Val Kilmer's, and George Clooney's. I'll have a review for all of those movies, as well as a review for the Batman this upcoming weekend. And as always, if you are new to my channel, click the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching this video, and I hope you all have a fantastic day.